Hello, I'm Trent aka O Trademark here. I get asked a lot, what is the best damage passive in anime fighters? The rarest passive in anime fighters is the ace passive. But if you watched my video that my most recent video I uploaded, I explained why ace is just trash. Well, average at best. And so the four best damage passives in the game are solid gold, Blessing, Tactical 3, and Ghostly. I'm gonna go ahead and start this time to kill test so we can see which one is the best. Now I'm not including Leader 3 in this list. Even though Leader 3 is a very good passive, I'm gonna do a video exclusively about Leader 3 at some point, but it kind of depends on your team synergy and some other factors that determine how good Leader 3 actually is. But for now, let's talk about these four passives. Now, the most misunderstood passive in the game is by and large, Tactical 3. I get messages from people all the time, and I've even done multiple videos about this. If you guys watch my videos, you know that I am a huge fan of Tactical 3. And yet I still get a ton of messages from people saying, trademark, Tactical 3 isn't good though. It only it only dumb, du doubles your attack, your punch damage. It doesn't double all your damage. And if you notice here, if you look in the bottom left hand screen here of the quadrant, you'll notice that the ult is doing 6.93 billion damage and the auto click damage is doing 1.48 billion, which is the, that's the regular uh, non-passive damage. So it appears as though the damage is not being doubled, but that is strictly a visual bug. I have done this test on, on passives on multiple different fighters against many different enemies, and without fail, Tactical 3 has always resulted in a in half the speed to actually kill the enemy. Uh, as a non-passive -pa uh, fighter, which means that it, it is doubling all sources of damage, including your click damage, including your ult damage, and your punch damage. And you will notice that Tactical 3 is going to be the first and the best passive to kill the enemy in this test again. Again, a 102% improvement from the time it takes for a fighter without a passive to kill this. Next up, we have Blessing coming in at 77% improvement. Next, we have Ghostly at 71%. And then finally, we have Solid Gold coming in at a respectable 63% improvement. So these are essentially the top four damage passives in the game. Now, there is going to be some slight variance depending on uh, some, some things that I'll kind of discuss, but let me go ahead and bring up the entire list of passives, of damage affecting passives for you guys to take a look at. Uh, thanks for the people that helped me, helped record these and helped me test these passive damage rankings. So, first off, Tactical 3, as you can see, it resulted in basically half, uh, less than half the time that it took to kill with a no passive, resulting in 102% improvement on time. Just an incredible, incredible passive. By far my favorite passive in the game. And it's a little bit more common to get than the mythical passive. So it's an incredible passive. Now it the two times damage is only versus bosses, but the majority of the time spent in the game is attacking bosses. So I still feel that it is just an incredible passive. Next up we have Blessing and then Ghostly. Now I need to talk about uh, Blessing is an incredible passive. It comes with some movement speed, uh, a really cool kind of aura effect and a 1.75 times damage multiplier. So if you're attacking a lot of minions or if you're doing a lot of solo time trials, then Blessing is probably on average going to be better than TAC3. But uh, then we have Ghostly. Now Ghostly is an interesting passive because Ghostly 
the value that you get out of a ghostly depends on the attack count of the character. Now I picked secretary for this test specifically because it is six hits to charge her ultimate and that's about average. On the low end, you're gonna have characters with like four hits to charge their ult, characters like um, Demon Meliodas or Demon Asta. Uh, and then on the high end, you got characters like Julius or uh, Gojo Purple or Sirius Saitama who have eight hits to charge their ultimate. And so the fighters that get the most value out of attack speed modifying ults, so, or attack speed modifying passives like Ghostly, um, Sorcerer 3, Tiny, any of these passives that affect how either how quickly you attack or how many hits it takes to charge your ult, they are going to be most beneficial on fighters that have high attack counts. So the higher the attack count, the more that they can actually benefit. And so in some scenarios with a fighter that has an eight attack count to charge their ult, Ghostly will actually be better, not only than Blessing, but if you combine um, if you combine a high attack count character with ult canceling, Ghostly can actually surpass Tactical 3. So it's a very interesting passive, depending on the character that it's on and whether you ult cancel or not, Ghostly is a, you know incredible, incredible passive. Next of all, we have Giant, Tank, and Solid Gold. Now, Giant and Tank both have a 1.65 damage modifier, and you'll see that their improvement was 60, basically 63 and 62%. The only reason Tank is slightly lower is because uh, I tested a little bit far away from the boss, so you have to walk there. And because Tank is slower, it took a little bit longer to actually reach the boss. Now, Solid Gold, has the same damage modifier as Blessing. However, because of the attack speed nerf that was added to Solid Gold uh, several updates ago, the value is only approximately the same as Giant or Tank. So Solid Gold, even though it's in, still an incredible uh, S-tier passive, for pure damage, it's not as good as stuff like Tac 3 or Blessing. But uh, if, you know, the 0.4 X, additional yen multiplier is just absolutely incredible and it stacks with the yen game pass so in my opinion solid gold is still i, I would just never reroll solid gold it's still an amazing amazing passive next up we have tac 2 and strong 3 now these this was a little bit interesting they basically should give about a 50 percent improvement on your on your time to kill uh for some reason tac 2 tested slightly faster there's always going to be some variance, and I'm not sure if that's just due to like uh, latency. Also, the the boss spawns at, at slightly different positions, whereas I'm standing in one one location. Or you know, when we when we have different testers doing tests, they stand in slightly different positions. So you're always going to have some variance um, between test to test. However, I was not expecting it to be this significant. But you'll notice down here on TAC 1 and Strong 2, Tactical actually tested worse than Strong 2, whereas TAC 2 tested better than Strong 3. So that's just kind of, I don't know. I, I don't really know how to explain it other than telling you guys that these are just, it, uh, don't take them as exact estimates. These tests are going to vary, like I said, based on a lot of factors. And so there's gonna be some slight movement um, between test to test and I tell you guys that with my da all of my damage rankings that there is some variance depending on several variables here Next up we have sort 3 now you can see it's about a 1 point or 42 percent increase in damage per second Source 3 is the same thing it does best on characters with high uh, ult counts so it, it would move up the list if you tested this on a character with eight attacks it would move down the list if it uh, was tested on a character with less than six hits to charge their ult. Um, Tiny, same thing. It's a little bit worse than Sork 3 now just because it's the Sork 3 does more than Tiny, basically. Uh, on certain characters, however, Tiny will be slightly, just a tad bit stronger than Strong 3. And so honestly, Sork 3 and Tiny still could use a slight buff, even though Tiny was already buffed and Sork was already Sork 3 was already buffed twice, I believe. 
They're still not in great spot, especially Sork 3 for being a mythical passive. And then finally down here at the bottom, we have Sork 2, Speedy, and Strong 1. Now I would never really keep any of these. Sork 2 is basically like a 1.2 um, times damage or like a DPS improvement. Again, Sork 2 will benefit characters with higher attack counts, but really not by that much because it's only lowering your, your ult charge by two attacks. And then Speedy and Strong 1. Like Speedy is just an absolute trash passive. Strong 1, again, it's not that great. It's a 1.1 times damage modifier. So really nothing here at the bottom. I would actually keep the first passive that I would actually consider keeping on one year carries would be Strong 2. Anything above Strong 2 if you're free to play is great. If you are um, a pay to play player or a game player, Game Pass player and you're willing to farm the shards or pay the Robux to do passive rerolls, I would suggest going for at least Tiny or better. And, and depending on the character, maybe Strong 3 or better. Because again, like I said, certain fighters are going to benefit more from Tiny and Sork 3. Others are going to benefit less. So hopefully this clears things up, especially about Tactical 3, because I am still constantly told that it is not a good passive and i am here to tell you guys that i am still as big of a fan of tactical 3 as i was from the beginning and it is still the best damage passive in the game anyways guys if you like this information go ahead and subscribe to the channel and join our discord community at discord.gg slash o trademark but that's it for me malo apito thanks for watching and peace, I'm out of here.